praise the Lord, you reach Pastor Priscilla Hawley. Let us go to the throne of grace. Eternal Heavenly Father, once again, we honor you. We honor you for your excellent wisdom. We honor you for your excellent power, provisions, knowledge, and understanding. We thank you, O Heavenly Father, because you are keeper of your word. We can depend upon what you say. We know it to be true and faithful, trustworthy. We know it to be upheld by your power. And so we yield to your wisdom. We yield to your ways. We accept your thoughts and we allow you to work out all situations according to your divine knowledge and will. Father, you've proven yourself that nothing, nothing, no principalities, no spiritual wickedness, no darkness and rulers and high places can ever prevail over your divine will because you are God and you behold all powers and you were excellent in wisdom to be omnipresent. There's no place you can't get to. There's no one you don't know whether they know you or not. There's nothing you don't know shall come to pass. And yet you're providentially, actively involved in your creation. Everything you created had a specific purpose. And it was all created for your pleasure. And so, Father, I honor you. I reverence you. I submit to you to be your pleasure. It's an honor and a privilege to be your pleasure. It's an honor and a privilege to be found to the praise of your glory because I trust in you and you alone. I trust you more than I trust myself because you have proven yourself to be the wiser. You've proven yourself to be the executor of righteousness and justice. You've proven yourself that you know all things. And I rejoice exceedingly because I can't even comprehend all that you're doing. because that's the type of God that you are. Humanity can never fully adequately behold all of your attributes, nor know all of your wonderful working. And I thank you, for without you, there will be no hope. Without you, there will be no faith. Without you, there will be no victory. Most holy and sovereign God, I honor you, my king of glory, who I come to for all of my needs, for all of my desires, for all I come to you, God that your will will be manifested in my life because there's none higher than you. You are first and foremost on my mind. You are my uprising and my downsetting. You have given me everything I've had. You've orchestrated my past everywhere that you led me and then operated through me. And even when the adversary tried to take me, 
you came up against and destroyed the workings of the adversary. Father, I thank you because you truly are the most holy and righteous one. You've made life so, so, so satisfying. You've made life so fulfilling. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who trusts in him. Thank you, God, for being trustworthy. Thank you, Lord, for being the righteous, the holy one, the eternal, immortal, invisible one. Thank you, Lord, for being the great I am. The all in all. Ha la 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 la. Thank you, God, for the indwelling. Let your message come forth as a rod and a stand, destroying adversaries' works and revealing your righteousness of truth. Let your message, Father, reside, resonate your holiness, your knowledge and power. Let your message bring terror, a shaking and an awakening that you are who you said that you are and a reward of them that diligently seek you. Let your message, God, come, restore, reveal all that you intended it to go forth to do. And let those who know you feel a quickening in their spirit. as you work through them and confirm your anointed saying may all desire you above all and be the wiser one to behold your glory, to behold your majesty and know the presence of the Lord. Destroy all yokes. Disarms all devices, releases all and everything that is necessary to live life abundantly and be pleasurable in your sight. Let us be adorned with your spirit of truth. Let us be clothed in your full arm. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the worship. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your presence a great reminder of who you are. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. 
Thank you, Lord. Father, destroy strongholds. Cast down every imagination that continuously try to exalt itself over the knowledge of who you are. It all belongs to you. We don't own you do. Thank you for owning this vessel. Use it as you please. That it will be found glorious in your sight. It's an honor and a privilege to be owned by you. To be redeemed by you. To be used by you. That your spirit manifests itself. Oh, we thank you for your presence, God. We thank you for your presence, God, that indwells these vessels. Your excellency is what makes these vessels worth. Without your excellence, these vessels are worth nothing. And so we honor and embrace what you have deposited. Ah, thank you for the releasing. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. Ah, thank you, God. Yes, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. A full submission of humbleness. And obedience to your will. Let your will be demonstrated in the sovereignty of who you are. Let it crash and destroy all idols that have risen above you. Let it dethrone everything that's not pleasing in your sight and let it bind and loose according to your will. In Jesus' name, we acknowledge the most holy and righteous. The one who we belong to. Who rightfully has authority over. Ah. The only one worthy. To be able. To execute such. Signs and wonders. The only one. Thank you, God. Oh, yes, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 There is something when you truly trust God and allow him to have it. We don't always know how God is, but I can assure you that when you trust him, there's an anointing that he gives that no one can give. I'm going to be coming out of the writings of Revelation. If you trust God, you will have to go beyond sight and enter into the realm of the holy of holies. This can only be done through the connection of his spirit with your spirit. Where it takes away your cognitive understanding. And you begin to have his mindset. Think 
he think as he revealed his perfect understanding word. He's a spirit. And if you go after anything other than him, you shall soon see the more spirit. Mm. And those who have his spirit will obey the spirit. They cannot obey any other spirit. For the Spirit gives us submission unto the Spirit. Thank you, Lord. If you would turn with me to Revelation 11. Revelation 11. There is something that God is doing that only those have truly yielded to the submission of his spirit and humbled themselves before a holy and righteous God for reason. The knowledge imparting to those who want to know the knowledge of who he is. This is not force on anyone. It's release for those who are seeking from him. And he gives. That's why it will never be any excuse when he returns. Because everyone would have had the opportunity to have an encounter with him if they had desired to encounter him. Our salvation and relationship will never be predicated on humanity. That's why the veil was torn, so that there will be no division between God and humanity. He tore the veil that we could go and have access to the holy of Before, we had to go to humanity. We couldn't go straight to the Holy of Holy. There was no access. That was a shadow of what was. It also showed the imperfect, corruptible reality of humanity. So that was moved, the layer of humanity, so that all who truly wanted the Lord's heart, who truly wanted his mind, his will, who truly wanted to be pleasing and acceptable, who truly wanted his provisions, his protection, who truly wanted his peace, who truly wanted his presence could come directly to him and receive from him. Those who truly wanted to sup with him would have the ability to sup with him. And he would give them the understanding needed. What this relationship with God is, it far surpasses traditions. It's not a traditional gathering. It's a worship in the spirit. That removes all hindrances because you're not physically nor cognitively using any of your human abilities. You are receiving from a supernatural where God deposits it in you to reveal 
what is his expectations? What is his will? What is his desire for your life? And the beauty about this intimate relationship is that when you have it, eternal factors cannot penetrate it. Nothing can be said or done or perpetrated and penetrate the area that God puts around those who fully trust in him and access him for all the provision. Many don't understand it. They have not yielded in his presence. You see, a vessel that submits and yields and humble themselves in his presence is a vessel that is wise toward the sovereign, holy, almighty. You understand the being that he provides. You understand that you can know nothing. He gives you. You understand that you can endure nothing except he endows you with an inner spiritual strength to endure all things. And it immediately changes everything because there's a releasing in which God takes all of your cares that you cast upon it, and you no longer have those concerns. You can't quite explain it because words could never adequately express in details what he has done and nor how he has done it. You just know through the inner workings that it was. You don't have cares of anxiousness and wary because it has been placed in the Father's hand. And whatever you know has been placed in the Father's hands, you don't pick it. So whatever the adversary tries to instill within you, the ways of the world's thinking and doing, God rejects it and you can never receive it because you have desired his will. And there is protection in wanting God's will even over your will. You see, when you want the Father's will, you're not leaning towards your own and then making a good saying, Father, I want your will. Because I acknowledge you as being the great sovereign one. And all will eventually see who is the sovereign one, who is the righteous one. And that's what trusting in God is all about. It removes the concerns. And he takes them. And covers them with his mercy and grace. He can faultless before his presence. Because you're trusting in him. And when you truly trust in him, you're not worried about what others want you to trust in. Because you're trusting in him and he's the one. So there's no need for communicating because he tells you to rebuke, resist, and submit only So he's always given imperative 
declarations of how to handle to those who want to receive. And he proves himself to be the wise of one. With how he keeps the vessels. Filled with his presence. Satisfied with. Seeking his will and his will only. Following his way. Desiring his ways above all. There is something about God's presence when you have a relationship to access. Oh, thank you, Lord. Chapter 11 contains significant symbolism and imagery describing events leading up to the end time. You do know that we are one day going to be journeying towards no one knows the end time. Yet we have a revelation that tells us some Aspects of the end times and what should happen. While revelation is a very difficult writing to interpret symbolism and imagery, God gave this to John. And John was able to have this documented so that we have it today to receive a greater understanding of the faithfulness of the holy and righteous. We have become too complacent with and which many lack the reverend fear of God. They have the audacity to tell They have the audacity to reject God's will. They have the audacity to try to take the plan and purpose of God and perpetrate a spirit of lies. And only those who have truly tapped into the access beyond the holy of holy will be able to withstand the end time. because they have a relationship and access that they can go to and they have practiced daily. That will comfort them and strengthen them during periods of unrighteous trials and tribulations that will not buckle them up under the adversary's pain. That's why you can be going through unrighteousness and rejoicing while you're going through it. And the adversary is not prevailing because they cannot get you out of your relationship with the holy and righteous God. It opens up with measuring of the temple. The measuring of the temple. John is given a measuring rod 
and instructed to measure the temple of God, the altar, and those who worship thee. Isn't it strange? John is given a measure of God. How can he measure the temple of God, the altar, and all those that worship him? This act symbolizes the protection and preservation of God's faithful people during a time of trial. Revelation 11.1 1 reads us this. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. In this verse, John described receiving a measuring rod from an angel, which symbolizes the act of measuring the temple of God, the altar and those worship it. This act of measuring signifies God's care and protection of his faithful followers. Verse two, but the court, which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Here John is instructed not measure the outer courts of the temple, which symbolizes the area given over to the Gentiles. The mention of the 42 months may symbolize a period of trial and persecution. Here, God is protecting those who have accessed him, who have made a commitment to be his vessel of righteousness who have submitted themselves unto him, who have humbled themselves the sovereign of him. He's protecting them. They call them faithful followers. Jesus keeps his word. But those who have rejected him, they are under severe trial and persecution for 42 months to symbolize their rejection of the sovereign Lord. God always protects his people. We may not always understand the magnitude of the protection and provision, but he is actively involved, even in those who reject him. He knows. Everyone that will receive him and everyone that will reject him and he executes righteous judgments upon each individual life. You see what is so unique about this relationship with our sovereign God is that it is personal. And what is personal, you don't share the intimacy of the personal with others is personal. It's an intimate, personal, engaging that is based on how much you love him, how much you desire to please him, and to share is to release your intimacy with him to others. And then you'll begin to try to please others. I don't know why someone thinks that they need to be more concerned about the outer courts than the inner. You see, it is the inner court the access to the holy of holy that gives you the provisions, that gives you God's care and protection, that signifies you are his power. It is the outer court that John was instructed not to get involved in. 
because they were given over to the Gentiles. And that they would have trials and persecutions for 42 months. Because the outer course was not receiving the same provision as the inner course. If you want to receive truly from God, you have to access the inner core, the holy of holy. If you want to be your own follower, stay in the outer core. Never enter the inner court, the holy of holies, because the anointing, the perseverance, the blessing, the presence of God, where you can engage, be restored, rejuvenated, receive revelation, is in the holy. Some will never enter the holy because they're remaining the outer. They're remaining the outer because their will will be drawn to the world. To access the inner, you have to deny the world. To get to the holy of holy, you have to reject the world's way. And trust God enough to know that his presence, his presence changes how you deal with life itself. His presence even changes how you deal with others. You can be in folly in the outer court. You can be in lack of reverence in the outer court. You can be in self-will in the outer court, but the inner court, the holy of holy, is only for those who have submitted themselves, humbled themselves, reverence the sovereign, holy God of creation. And God determines that. You see, there are two witnesses. The two witnesses are granted authority to prophesy for 1,260 days. Symbolizing a period of tribulation. That's what the end times will be. A period of tribulation. And only those who know how to access the holiness of God will be able to endure the tribulation. That's how you can go through some things now. And it doesn't appear you're going through anything. They can't break you. They can't control you. They can't manipulate you. They can't defile you. Because you are too submitted, too devoted, too trustworthy towards, too faithful towards a sovereign and holy God. You see, the two witnesses are described as having the power to perform miracles, such as calling down fire from heaven and shutting up the sky to prevent rain. After they finish their testimony, they are killed by the beast, which is interpreted as the Antichrist. You do know that the Antichrist has a lot of deceit, trickery, Delusion over many who fail to submit to a holy and righteous God. You have to be careful of the Antichrist. It has powers 
signs and lying wonders. You have to be careful about putting your faith in the Antichrist over the sovereign holy God. Because the Antichrist mission is to take you out of the will of God. That's why you have to know how to access the holy because the Antichrist can't get into the holy. You have to know where to get where the Antichrist can't enter to preserve you, to keep you from falling in deception. And there is much deception. That's why everybody's not going to make it. Many are going to fall into the Antichrist deception. They're going to believe a lie. They're going to have self-will. They're not going to trust the sovereignty of God. The Bible says the two witnesses' bodies are going to lay in the street for three and a half days before being resurrected and taken up to heaven. This passage is highly symbolic. Here they're killed by the beast, the Antichrist. Because of their testimony about God. Let's look at what is saying. And verse three. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. Here they are clothed in sackcloth. But yet they have the power of God to prophesy. They're prophesying the truth from the power of God. They're bearing witness to the truth of God's word. They're not believing a lie about God's word. They're prophesying 1,260 days revealing to all the truth about God's word. The sackcloth that they're wearing is to represent repentance, mourning and repentance. There is something about mourning and repentance. Mourning and repentance is what all the saints must have who are truly operating in the spirit and power of God. The condition of what these two witnesses are experiencing in the earth realm brings them to mourning, brings them to deep concern about the condition of the world, the earth, that has rejected a holy and righteous God, that have lost the knowledge and understanding of the truth of his word. They're mourning and in repentance that God would intervene and restore favor back unto his creation. See, many don't want to mourn and they don't want to repent. They are not even called unto mourning and repentance. They have no 
sympathy. They have no humility. They have no spirit that brings about tears of concern about what is happening in the world. They see not what is happening as being sorrowful and an abomination against all. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of creation. The two witnesses are linked to olive trees and candlesticks, which symbolize their role in bringing light and nourishment to God's people. Many have lost the candlestick. They've lost the light. They've lost nourishment. They've lost being fed by God and led by his integrity. They've lost the understanding that his word is a lamp unto our feet, their feet, and a light unto their path. They lost the lamp and the light. The lamp and the light. They've lost the guidance. They've lost the direction. They've lost the truth. Verse five, and if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. This verse describes the supernatural protection of the two witnesses who have the power to consume their enemies with fire, symbolizing divine judgment against those who oppose God's servant. Do you not know that God still protects his servants? that he still provides judgment against those who oppose his servants. And yet some do not fear God, nor the divine judgment that he brings upon those who reject and oppose his servants. They killed all of his prophets, even his son, which was more than just a prophet. Because they were in delusion. They were in opposition of the will and knowledge of God. They had not the lamp nor the light. They had not the integrity of the knowledge of the Father. They were not God skillfully by his hands. They had not the candlesticks, nor that they had the nourishment of God's word. Verse six. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. You see, these two witnesses possess the authority to bring about various natural disasters, reminiscent of the plagues in Egypt as a mean of demonstrating God's power and judgment. They had the ability, spiritual power, to manifest, to demonstrate God's power and judgment. Do you not know now 
God gives some of his servants the ability to demonstrate his power and judgment. That's why it's necessary for you to access the Holy of Holies. That's why it's necessary for you not to be in the outer court, but to be in the Holy of Holies so that you can be spiritually endowed with his power to do greater works in his name. Revelation eleven seven, And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. After completing their testimony, the two witnesses will be killed by the beast, symbolizing the opposition faced by God's faithful servants from the forces of evil. The Bible says we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and our testimony. So that's how we overcame. We overcame all that we had to endure by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Because we love not our lives unto death. We overcame because we understood that our life belonged to God. And whether he keeps us here on earth or takes us home to glory, either way we belong to him. And we cannot lose. Because no one can pluck us out of his hand. We overcame because we did not fall into perpetrators, identification of who they want to make us to be, but we accept the with God placed upon our life. Don't let God show you through divine judgment your waywardness because you fail to repent you fail to mourn over your error and judgment of who God is. Don't ever force your way over God's will. For anyone's life, for divine judgment shall outpour upon them. Verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. The bodies of the two witnesses will be left in the streets of a great city, symbolizing Sodom in Egypt, symbolically. We know what Egypt was where God used all the plagues to show he's God, he's sovereign, where he killed all the firstborn of the Egyptian to show he's Lord over creation, where he delivered his people. We know what Sodom is. We know that Sodom and Egypt both represent sin and oppression. Sin and oppression. Captivity, strongholds, bondage, entrapment, Sodom and Egypt. Destruction, Sodom and Egypt. Darkness, Antichrist, Sodom and Egypt. 
delusion, Sodom and Egypt. Defilement, Sodom and Egypt. Sin and oppression. Revelation 11, 9. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. The public display of the bodies of the two witnesses for three and a half days signifies the world's rejection and contempt of God's message. Rejection and contempt of God's message. Even today, many are rejecting in an arc and in contempt of God's message. Even today, we can see a temporary triumph of evil forces. And we must understand that. Today we see a temporary rejection and contempt for God's message. Some are going to repent and turn back and receive and submit to God's word. They're going to hear the message and receive the message. They're going to have understanding and a true intimate relationship with the sovereign God. And the temporary triumph of evil forces shall be brought a base. See, it's just temporary triumph. It shall not Last. Verse 10. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. The reaction of the people to the death of the two witnesses is one of celebration indicating the extent of their hostility towards God and his messages. They're celebrating. They're rejoicing. Sending gifts one to another. Because the two witnesses that prophesied for 1,260 days are now deceased. You see the heart of iniquity. The heart of iniquity. Celebrated. That shows you the mindset of those who killed prophets, killed the disciples, and even Jesus Christ. They rejoice. They held banquets. They wanted to get rid of truth. because they rejected truth. Now you understand why the final judgment will be such of a great terror. Look at what they're doing in rejection and contempt for God. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. We can find some consolation a source of P. 
peace, a source of patience when we meditate on chapter 11 of Revelation. When we are unjustly treated, unjustly disrespected because of our position in Christ, our stand for him, our life for him, and temporarily evil triumphs through doing egregious action to those who love God, who desire to live for God and obey God, God will have vengeance and it will be a terror vengeance because these people will never repent nor, re nor mourn for their iniquity, their heart of iniquity disdainment for the things of God. The hostility toward God. They are rejoicing over the righteous one who God put there in his power to proclaim his truth. The truth of his word. Now you understand the severe consequences of rejecting the truth of God's word while he's returning back. He's returning back in war because many rejected his message. He sent prophets. He sent witnesses. He sent those who he empowered with the word of truth message to execute to communicate to be a sword dividing rightfully between deception false teaching things that were honorable and God they spoke truth and some rejected it. They were in contempt of the truth. God knows those who will remain in contempt of the truth. They will not receive truth. They will not accept truth. They rejected and was in contempt of God's message. They killed the messenger, but the message came from God. That's why when the Lord returns, he's returning for war and there will be no excuse. He's not coming in peace. He's coming to destroy all those that rejected and had contempt for his message because he's a righteous God. And those that want to say, if God is love, then why can't I live the way I want? Because he's love, you can't live the way you want. He loves you enough to let you know the truth. But if you keep rejecting and being in contempt of the truth, you're going to reap the rewards of the iniquity of your doing. And there'll be no excuse 
Because when he returns, everyone would have had the opportunity to receive the truth of his message. He is a just God, not an unjust God. Verse 11. After the three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered them again. Now, here they are, dead, and everybody celebrating, buying gifts, rejoicing and rejecting God's message because they killed the messenger, which ultimately means they acted ungodly toward God, the one who sent the two witnesses there to give the message to give them a chance to repent and mourn over their condition. But they had a heart of iniquity. They had a heart of deception. They had a heart of hostility towards the things of God. That's why the Bible says no one knows the heart of the heart is deceitfully wicked. But God You cannot determine people. God does. You can only vaguely discern some things by their actions, but you really don't know them until they reject and contempt at your message. Then they will try to destroy your life the way they destroyed these two witnesses. Because they rejected the truth of God's word and they did not want to know truth. The Antichrist had them. And so God resurrected these two witnesses. They stood on their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. They had a party rejoicing, buying gifts, celebrating. Triumph had temporarily exhorted itself in evil. Forces. Because they thought they had stopped God's message from going forward. You do know no one can stop the message of God's truth from going forward. You do know that if anybody tries to stop God's message from going forth, there are great consequences. Divine judgment, that anything that's done to his servants, God will have vengeance upon. And in the end times, that's what you're going to hate. The Antichrist is going to stop, try to stop God's message of truth going forth. And many are going to listen to what they want to hear, itchy ears. They're going to do what they want to do. They're going to perpetrate what God never perpetrated. They're going to try to turn the saints around to believe a delusion, a lie, to reject God. But only the very elite, those who remain faithful in God's message, in God's love, in God's trust, shall prevail. That's why you can't accept everything somebody's trying to put you in. That's why you can't partake of everybody's ways and desire. Because when you do, you reject the very God of truth. And you leave his protection. You leave his cover. And the adversary has happened over your life. So God raised them and they were afraid. They saw the miraculous event that was demonstrating God's power over death. They were in terror. 
you do know God has power over death. That's why we don't fear death. We don't tempt God, but we don't fear death. Because God has power over death. Revelation verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. The voice from heaven caused the two witnesses to ascend to heaven symbolizing their vindication and reward for their testimony. Their enemies witnessed their ascension, further demonstrating God's triumph over evil. You, they ascended up to heaven. God has power over death. He takes us to heaven where the adversary cannot go. Where the adversary cannot stop. Where the adversary has no power. Verse 13. And the same hour was a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. The resurrection and ascension of the two witnesses are followed by a great earthquake, which signifies God's judgment upon the wicked and causes some to repent and give glory to God. God always desired is repentance. He sends signs and wonders for those who do not believe, for they should come unto repentance and give glory to God. This was done for repentance so that they would give glory to God. That is God's desire, that we repent and give glory to him. But many will not repent and give glory because we have a self-will hardened by the Antichrist acceptance. And you cannot change those who are in rejection and contempt of the truth of God. You have to remain faithful to God. The seventh verse, the seventh trumpet. We first had the measuring of the temple, the two witnesses, and now the seventh trumpet are the three significant divisions in chapter 11. The inner temple was measured. The two witnesses that was clothed and sackcloth. And now the power of the witness until their work is accomplished. And then we had the temporary triumph of evil. The sounding of the seven trumpet is where we have the third division. The chapter concludes with the sounding of the seven trumpet, with signals that culmination of God's judgment and the establishment of his kingdom. Loud voices in heaven declared that the kingdoms of the earth, of this world, are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Revelation 11, 15. This trumpet blast is a significant moment in the writing of the signal of the ultimate victory of God over evil. 
Revelation. Fourteen reads as this. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe comes free. This verse indicates the completion of the second woe and foreshadows the coming of the third woe, which will bring further judgment and tribulation upon the earth. The exegesis of Revelation chapter 11 provides an interpretation of the symbolism and events declared in the text. Highlighting the things of judgment, persecution, and God's ultimate triumph over evil. Judgment, persecution. We're going to have to go through that when he comes back. Judgment, persecution, and God's ultimate triumph over evil. Now, that's why it is important to trust God. The end times that God is writing, who he gave John the vision for the revelation in chapter 11, is the necessity of trusting God beyond your sight your will and humanity because of the Antichrist, the rejection and contempt for God's message, the rejection and contempt for the things that are sacred to God. Verse 15, and the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdom of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. The seven Trump signals significant events in the end time. It announces the triumph of God's kingdom over all earthly power. Emphasizing the eternal reign of the Lord and his Christ. If you don't remember anything else, you must understand that Christ shall reign forever and ever. His eternal kingdom and his dominion. Verse 16, and the four and twenty elders which sat before God on the throne seat fell upon their faces and worshiped God. Twenty-four elders representing the redeemed of both the Old and New Testaments bow in worship before God. Their reaction symbolizes reverence and acknowledgement of God's sovereignty over all creation. Verse 17, saying, we give the thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which ought and was and ought to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and has reigned. The elders offer thanks to God for his omnipotent and eternal nature. They acknowledge his assumption of great power and his commitments of his reign over all creation. Verse 18, and the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. The nations... God is describing the response of the nations to God's establishment of his kingdom. They were mad and angry because many nations even today reject 
and have contempt for God's message. It also speaks of God's coming judgment. He's going to reward his servants and the destruction of those who harm the earth, which means God is going to show his divine justice and retribution. Divine judgment and retribution. And we forget God's divine judgment and retribution. God's divine justice and retribution. That's why you don't let anyone tell you what God is not confirming. Because of the Antichrist in the last days. How do you not know that? Verse 19, and the temple of God was open in heaven. And there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. This verse describes the opening of the temple of God in heaven, revealing the ark of his testament. It is accompanied by dramatic celestial phenomena, including lightning, voices, thunderings, and earthquake and hell, symbolizing the magnitude and significance of the events unfolding in earth and on earth heaven. Now, did not God do that when they crucified his son? He symbolized the magnitude and significance of that event. To summarize Revelation 11, it portrays a vision of divine judgment the faithful testimony of God's servant, as I stated in Revelation 11, about how we overcame by the testimony, we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the testimony of the saints in Revelation 12, 11. Here, God is confirming it again, the faithful testimony of God's servant and the ultimate triumph of God's kingdom over the forces of dark. This chapter is rich in symbolism and meaning. It reveals the mysteries of God's plan for the world. That's why you don't listen to humanity over God. That's why you don't find yourself entangled with the folly of humanity over God. Because the Antichrist rejects and have contempt against the sacred things of God, his servants and his message. And only those who hold true to God will overcome by the blood of the Lamb Everybody's not going to be washed by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And everybody's not going to love God even unto death, which he gives us eternal life. Let us get ready to pray. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the end time revelation that you prevail, even though it appears now that temporarily evil is prevailing, triumphing, that much is being done to reject and hinder your message. There's much contempt for the sacredness of who you are. There's much contempt for those who abide and remain faithful and dedicated to you. There's much contempt for your ways, your holiness, your righteousness, and your justice. But the same way you prevailed, the same way you gave a testimony 
the same way you reveal, you shall return in war and execute divine judgment for vengeance shall be yours. We thank you for the comforting message that you shall keep us even during the time of your return in the end times will be kept in your pavilion under the shadow of your almighty as we remain faithful being washed by the blood of the lamb being covered in your mercy and grace and bowed with your power to endure the truth of your word being clothed in your righteousness openly testifying of the truth of your workings you're doing in our life and loving you with all our heart mind body and soul even into the moment we take our last breath. For we fear not to be eternally in your presence and at your throne of grace, resurrected in celestial bodies, overcoming the darkness of this world, the deceit and defilement that you will allow temporary to reign and then execute your terror upon all who rejected you and who destroyed and hurt your people. Father, we thank you because you fight battles that no one can win but you. You orchestrate your purpose and will that no one will fully understand but you. And so we yield to you in the excellency of who you are. Thank you, God, because you are spirit. And we hold true to your wisdom. We will not be deceived. We will not be disobedient. We will not yield to humanity's way. We will humble ourselves and access the holy of holies that wickedness cannot enter in that is reserved for the righteous that you make righteous. We thank you that almost consider the man. Fear you and keep your way for you shall judge all things seen and unseen we thank you for the commandment we thank you for the promise that you shall judge and that vengeance will be yours you will avenge all who was unrighteously treated because of our faithfulness to you because of our desire to obey you. We rejoice in knowing you have it all. You are the rightful judger that can execute the last breath we all take and the destiny in which we shall be placed according to your will and knowledge. Oh, holy and righteous, sovereign one, thank you. May we be found to the praise of your glory because we trust in you and you alone. For we understand the Antichrist is very deceptive and many shall take the mark of the beast because they have failed to trust you. And we thank you, God, 
for giving us access to the sovereign holy one. But we will never take the mark of the beast. We will never be deceived. And you shall show your victorious manifestation of your power above death and triumph over evil that shall cease to prevail. Thank you, Father, for keeping all that's sacred and holy on your throne. Thank you, Father, for keeping those who want to obey you in your will. Thank you, Father, for the trials and tribulations that you fought and came through as pure gold on our behalf. Thank you, Father, for the releasing, the restoration and the confirmation that you have it all. And no one knows but you. What you revealed to John and you wrote and many still don't understand the mystery of the war behind the scenes that they cannot see the spiritual win between the wicked and the right. For only you know, the righteous that shall prevail over the unjust. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your righteousness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I can imagine they tried to change God's heart. They can imagine they tried to change the testimony of the two witnesses. But God's sovereignty over all creation was exemplified and made known to all who kept their trust in him. And those who did not, they saw the terror of God's judgment. He's a righteous God. He judges wise with all knowledge and authority. And he shall continue to pervade. Yes. Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty, we give you thanks. Yes. Sing holy. Holy Lord God Almighty, we give you thanks, which art and was and are to come. We give you thanks. Thy great power has reigned. Thy great power has prevailed. Lord God Almighty, we give you thanks. Holy, holy, 
Lord God Almighty. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. Lord God Almighty. Which art and was and are to come, we give you thanks. Oh Lord God Almighty, the sovereign Lord who reigns and great power and might. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your provisions. Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty, which was and are to come. We give you thanks. We give thee thanks. Lord God Almighty, we give you thanks. Lord God Almighty, We give you thanks, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. Lord God Almighty, we give you thanks. Behold the Lamb of God, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, we give thee thanks. We give thee thanks. Lord God Almighty, holy, 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 holy. Lord God Almighty, We give thee thanks. Adorn us with your whole armor, God. And thou these earthly vessels with your excellency. Let the spirit of praise Rejoice at your altar, God. We give thee thanks. Oh, holy, holy, sovereign, mighty God, who art and has and art to come. We acknowledge your greatness, your sovereignty, almighty one. We give you thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. 
Oh, give thanks unto the righteous one, the holy one. Worthy is the lamb. We give you thanks, saying worthy is the lamb of God. That was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and glory and blessings and honor. For thou art created all things and all things for thy pleasure. Lord, we give you thanks. We're your pleasure. Holy, 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 sovereign God Almighty. We honor you, Lord. We worship you, God. You're holy and righteous and pure and true. Keep us clothed in your righteousness, God. Keep us justified. Holy, 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 holy. The righteous king of glory. We thank you, Lord. Glory, hallelujah, Lord. Glory, hallelujah, Lord. The King of glory is reign and righteousness. Strong and mighty, mighty in battle. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. He shall execute his righteousness. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. We worship and honor you, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I will say this of the Lord. He's my rock, my strong time, my refuge in whom I will put my trust. He's my hiding place. He's the lifter of my head. He's my hope, my joy, my righteousness, my shield, my buckler, my strong power. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Strong and mighty. Holy, holy, holy Lord, the righteous one. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy Lord, we worship you. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Earth and heaven declare your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, you reign eternally. Holy, holy, holy Lord, we rejoice in your loving kindness, God. Oh, righteous one. The beginning and the end, the first and the last, the author and finisher of our faith, the bishop of our soul, the conqueror of death, 
the resurrected Savior, the eternal Lamb of God, oh, Holy One, we reverence you. We reverence you, Lord, most holy one. We reverence you, God, most holy one. We reverence you, God, most holy one. Cast down all strongholds. Destroy all thrones. Be exalted, Lord. Be exalted, sovereign Lord. Be exalted, Lord. Most holy one. Ooh. Have your will, God. The spirit of truth. The spirit of truth is high and lifted up. The spirit of truth rules and reigns eternally. The spirit of truth and all power. Oh, sovereign one. We humble in your presence, God. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 holy. Adorn us with your holiness, God. Adorn us with your holiness, God. Holy, 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 holy. We stand in your presence, God. We stand in your presence, God. And bow before your throne. Holy, holy, holy. The Lord God Almighty. Thou art and hast and art to come. Holy, 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 holy. Oh, sovereign God. Amen. 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 The King of Glory shall reign forever. He reigns forever. He reigns forever. The King of Glory shall reign forever. He reigns forever. The King of Glory shall reign forever. He reigns forever. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty. Oh, thank you, God. Lord God Almighty, the King of Glory shall reign forever. La 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 
most holy and righteous one. Lord God Almighty, Lord God Almighty, Lord God Almighty, Lord God Almighty, Lord God Almighty. Lord God Almighty, Lord God Almighty, Lord God Almighty, Holy, Holy. Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty, Lord God Almighty, the King of glory. Strong and mighty, mighty in battle, is on his throne, the king of glory. Strong and mighty, mighty in battle, is on his throne. Lord God Almighty, the King of glory, strong and mighty, is on his throne, eternal throne. The King of glory, strong and mighty, is on his eternal throne, Lord God Almighty. Holy, 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 the King of glory, the strong and mighty, is on his eternal throne. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. The King of glory, strong and mighty. Glory and honor belongs to you, Lord. Reign eternally. The King of glory. Holy, holy, holy. The King of glory. Your righteousness prevails over all. Your righteousness, God. Your majesties. Holy and so, we honor you, Lord. Mm. Mm. Amen. Amen. Don't ever take God's holiness and righteousness for granted. He's a spirit. Spirit of power and holiness. And without holiness, no one shall see the Lord. Oh Lord God Almighty, we reverence you, God. 
we bow at your throne, God. And say, holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty. Which is and was and shall come again. Your eternal throne of grace. Lord God Almighty, we reverence you. Lord God Almighty, Lord God Almighty, we reverence you, Lord God Almighty, Lord God Almighty, Lord God Almighty, we bow before your throne. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, receive our worship, receive our worship, Lord, oh Lord God Almighty, we bow before your throne, receive our worship, Lord, receive it, receive it, receive it. Ah, yes, God. Yes, God. Amen, amen, amen. 